church planter can walk 20 miles in a day. Give him a bicycle and he can go three times as far and be three times as effective. God bless you and thank you so much for joining me one more time as we continue our chronological study through the entire New Testament. We're back in Acts chapter 10 in a very monumental moment in the church's history when the gospel was introduced and salvation was offered to Gentiles. And I think that many uh, of your average reader who reads Acts chapter 10 does not realize the monumentalness of this monumental moment. And uh, we do get some clues as we read through this 10th chapter, and I'm going to try to highlight those as we continue to work our way through here. But quick background, you know, just, just to review real quickly. Peter's in Joppa, has this vision, sheet lowered down with all these different unclean animals according to the law of Moses. He hears a voice, says, arise. Peter kill and eat. Peter says, I've never eaten any unclean thing. God says, what I have cleansed no longer consider unholy. Peter scratching his head about that. Uh, the day before, God gave a, a vision of an angel to a guy named Cornelius, a Roman centurion up in Caesarea, up the coast from Joppa, and uh, says, go send for Peter. He's staying down in Joppa with a guy by the name of Simon, a tanner by the sea. Those guys just arrive right after Peter has uh, his vision. And so a voice says to Peter, some guys are here. Go with them, don't even question it. And so now we are to where we currently are at in the story, where Peter makes the journey up to Caesarea. This all takes a couple of days for it to transpire. When he gets there, there's Cornelius, this Roman centurion, a God-fearing Gentile who prays continually and gives alms to the poor Jewish people uh, who are living around him. And uh, his whole house sort of gathered there, and they are waiting, anticipating uh, that Peter is going to have this extraordinary message. They know it's it's a message from God for them. And uh, we asked the question last time, you know, if an angel appeared to Cornelius and told him to go get Peter, couldn't the angel have preached the gospel just as well as Peter? Yeah, I suppose he could have, but God has chosen for us at this point, present time anyways, people his, his, to be his messengers and his servants. And so Peter makes the journey up there. And of course, there's another divine purpose. God wants the entire church engaged now in reaching out to the Gentiles. And this is going to be such a radical thing in the minds of most Jews and, and even Jewish believers in Jesus Christ that God has to take some remarkable steps uh, to convince people, okay, and even with difficulty. So here is Peter now preaching in front of the household of Gentile Cornelius, and he opens up his message to them in verse number 28 of Acts chapter 10, uh, where we left off last time. He said to them, you yourselves know how unlawful it is for a man who is a Jew to associate with a foreigner or to visit him. Okay, so this is forbidden in Jewish culture. And not that it would be forbidden in the Old Covenant law. God did say to come out from among them and be ye separate. But the Jews had added all kinds of laws on top of God's laws. Uh, they called them, or we call them, the fence laws. They were laws built to protect the laws. So if you, if you, if you keep the fence laws, you're not going to you know, ultimately break the law of God. So we go to extremes to avoid breaking the law of God. And so when God says, come out from among them and be ye separate, man, they took that literally to the head. We don't even eat with anybody who's not circumcised and, you know, a follower of, of Moses, the law of Moses. We don't visit them. We don't go with them. Uh, but Peter's done that. And yet he says, here's the reason why. Yet God has shown me that I should not call any man unholy or unclean. So Peter has begun to figure out uh, what that vision was all about. It really wasn't about animals. It was more about people. And Jews in general looked down upon Gentiles because they weren't keeping the law of Moses. 
houses and uh, they were immoral and uh, unholy and unclean in their eyes, even if the Jews had a standard set up that really wasn't a, a, a right moral standard, you know, they would judge them by itty bitty tiny little things rather than by the foundational moral principles that are written upon the hearts of every person. So in verse number 29, that is why I came without even raising any objection when I was sent for. So I asked for what reason you have sent for me. So Peter's going to get them to speak first. Cornelius said, four days ago to this hour, I was praying in my house during the ninth hour, three o'clock in the afternoon, and behold, a man stood before me in shining garments. And he said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your alms have been rem remembered before God. And so God had been taking notice of this Gentile man. And however you want to say it, uh, he's, he's gaining favor with God. How could he not? I mean, he fears God. We already read that earlier on with all of his household. He prays continually. He's praying not to uh, the Roman gods. He's praying to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he's caring for the poor. I mean, this guy has more righteousness going for him than many professing, quote unquote, born again Christians. Okay, and so your prayers and alms have risen as a memorial before God. God has been taking notice, and so you are a marked man. You are a special man, and I've chosen you to be the first Gentile in your household, to be the first Gentiles to hear some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful news. All right, so, and he said, uh, continuing in verse 32, therefore send to Joppa and invite Simon, who is also called Peter, to come to, come to you. He is staying at the house of Simon the Tanner by the sea. So this is all redundant for us. But first time, of course, Peter is getting all these particular details right from the horse's mouth. So I sent for you immediately and you have been kind enough to come. Now then, we are all here present before God to hear all that you have been commanded by the Lord. And uh, we don't know if God gave any special revelation to Peter beyond that the, the vision he had of the, of the animals being lowered on the, the big sheet, you know. Uh, but if he didn't, he didn't need to. I mean, goodness, Peter figured out by now what message would God have for these people, you know, the message that we've been commanded to take into the whole world, the message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Peter's sermon begins. Opening his mouth, Peter said, now listen to this profound statement. I most certainly understand now that God is not one to show partiality. That is packed with revelation that we'll talk about next time. So I'll see you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.